and welcome to Dollhouse Build episode 6. So today is all about decorating the inside of the house and my plans for it. Now obviously it's early doors yet, um, if you've been following the series I'm still building the back part of the basement so it, the project has just started and I don't have um, sort of in-depth detail for every room but I'll just share with you my thoughts um, and where I am at the minute. Now, I do have some quite grand plans for this house and I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull them off or not, but I promise to share the trials and the tribulations, the successes and failures with you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how we get on. So I'll take you back to my original plan of the drawings and uh, I'll explain what I plan to do. So one thing that I completely forgot to mention, which is important when thinking about the outside as well, not just for the decoration, but is in terms of structural changes. So, for example, you might want extra windows up the sides of the house. Um, my house has windows, but I've had houses that don't have that. So you might want to put additional windows in. Um, I had a Georgian house where on the side I actually decided I wanted a conservatory. So I bought some French doors and I actually made a mark um, in the side and then I cut that out before I assembled the piece. So once I assembled it, the French doors just slotted in like any other door in a house kit does. So it's a good idea to have a think about any changes like that you want to make. And, and I like these kind of changes because it just makes your kit, which is, you know, a normal house off the shelf, just a little bit more unique and special. Um, another example in my Tudor house, I put some... Um, I cut some holes out of the roof to put some dormer windows. Um, and then if you've got a house maybe with a balcony, you might want to add doors um, coming out onto the balcony. A lot of them just have a balcony with a window. Um, so things like that. It's just a good idea to have a, a think about the construction because I will be talking about um, construction within the interior. So if your house has chimneys, it will lend itself nicely to having fireplaces within the rooms. Now, it's up to you if you want to do this. You don't have to. If it doesn't have chimneys on the house, you could still put fireplaces in. Um, normally, in a traditional house, you'd have a fireplace in each room because obviously that's how you used to heat the house. And especially in a big house like mine, you would have had a fireplace in each one of the of the six big rooms. Um, now, I don't know if I want to put fireplaces in every single room, but certainly on the left-hand side, I probably want to add some fireplaces. Um, the kitchen, for example, I'm probably thinking about putting a range in there, so I want a fireplace. The bedroom, one of the bedrooms might look nice with a fireplace. So that is something that I'm going to be thinking about in terms of structural changes for the property. Now, because in general you're not cutting anything out to make a fireplace, you're just adding a block of wood with a hole in, if you like, and standing it against a wall. Um, you can add fireplaces retrospectively um, and you can add them in refurbished houses as well. So, um, you know, if you decide to add one later, you probably can do that without too much fuss, to be honest. Now, if you've been following the series, you'll probably be fairly familiar with this basic plan that I drew of the house um, a couple of episodes ago, just to give a rough idea um, of some of the some of the ideas I have for the room on the house. So at the minute, we're just working on this back basement part, um, and you can see the house is made of a basement, ground floor, first floor, second floor, attic. Um, and as you can see, there's just a couple of rooms that I've already decided that are pretty much set in stone as to what I want them to be at this stage. So I'll go through sort of individual parts of the house and I'll give you an idea of some of my plans and ideas. Um, and I'd love to hear what you think. So, yeah, please feel free to comment as we go along. So I quite like this design for a number of reasons. So that little alcove where the range cooker is, I would like to do something similar with the fireplace. Um, I just like it. It looks. It just looks cute to me being a little, a little alcove like that, like a traditional country kitchen. Um, I really like the doors, these shaker style doors. Again, sort of traditional look, and I love the wood there as like a wood countertop. Now, I'm not sure if I want to go with cream and the wood, although it looks really nice on here, or whether I'd like to go with maybe a sage color for the cabinets. Um, I did mention having sage on the trim on the outside um, and I think sage and cream looks really nice and with that wood would look um, would look to be a nice contrast as well rather than just having it in cream. So something to think about. Um, in terms of the cabinetry, I'm probably going to be making most of the... Well, in fact, I will be making all the cabin, cabinetry myself because I want it to all match. 
Um, I don't know how technical <laughs> I will get. Um, but yeah, you can certainly follow me along um, as I start to make some um, cabinets and bits and bobs for the kitchen. Okay, so this central um, staircase area and the hallways, I want to um, make in kind of the same colour. But I do probably want to change up some things. So, for example, the flooring um, in here, because it's the basement, I'd like quite like to have some sort of red Victorian tile flooring, maybe. And then for the next one, which would be like the main hallway entrance, I might want to do um, some little Victorian tiles in a nice like little mosaic style. Um, so that's my idea for that. And then the top two, um, I'll probably just have um, strip wood flooring um, and dye that like a dark brown to match the rest of some of the, the trim of the interior. Now, if we move over to this hat, this room, sorry, um, of the basement, I have been thinking a lot about this. It's probably been on my mind more than any other rooms just because I decided already on this one and I'm obviously working on this area. Um, and initially I had thoughts of having it as like a, a basement style room with sort of storage in and maybe utility and that kind of thing. But then I realised uh, quite quickly that actually it's one of the rooms that has a bay window at the front. So I think it lends itself to be a nicer room rather than just somewhere that's storage. I think if you had that in your house, you wouldn't use it as a storage room. You would, you know, have it set out as a proper room. So then I was thinking about other ideas and one of the things that I thought about was to have um, some kind of division here. So a division, um, a divider obviously here, keep this one here because of the structure, but then have a second one, which I could make myself to put in about here and have this area as maybe utility, um, a cloakroom at the back with the toilet uh, and then have this as maybe some kind of entertaining space. Now that thinking was all well and good until I realised about the front and I'll explain why. So here's the back part of the basement just built up again and I'll show you what I mean about the um, wall divisions and just being a bit careful about the front. So um, I'll just use one of these but obviously I would have had to make um, a new one. So if I just take this my idea was to have an extra division which is maybe along here somewhere. If that will stand um, so that I'd have like a, a maybe a utility room or something here and then obviously that wider section there. Um, for the basement um, however if I obviously I haven't built the front part yet but it goes like that so that this basement part will sit on the front now if I show you the division it's going to come right in you know the front of that bay window which in a real house you just you just wouldn't have that it just looks terrible sorry about my finger there um, you know it just looks not great so you wouldn't have that and obviously if I move it right up here there's going to be such a tiny space there you, there's, you can't put anything in there anyway um, so yeah the idea is to maybe have something going along the back I think that's going to knock that one down but I'll give you an idea um, over here so that instead I have contained that into two areas there so I've got the smaller area at the front um, and then what I want to be the cloakroom there at the back so with that in mind, what I've decided to do, because I have a window here, that actually lends itself at the back um, that could be a nice little room with a, a separator across here. Now, it will add just a bit of difference and a bit of interest because it will make one of the rooms um, a little bit less deep than the others. Um, there's a few considerations you have to think about if you're adding a partition towards the back. Now, first, I'm only going to have a door entrance here, which means I need to make sure that I can get my hand round. There's probably going to be a toilet here because it will be a cloakroom and a little vanity unit here. But I do need to get my hand in the door and round to be able to move stuff and to clean. So that will take a little bit of consideration as well. And obviously, I need to be quite careful about this partition. But that's my idea for that area. Um, I would also maybe like a fireplace here and I'm thinking about maybe putting like a little log burner in. So it's like a nice, cosy, entertaining area here. Um, and then you'd go out obviously onto the, the courtyard there. So that's my idea for that area. Um, I envision the back part of this, the cloakroom, I'd like some nice white and blue or cream and blue wallpaper. Uh, where the where the toilet will be um, and in this front area 
I'd probably like a nice wallpaper that goes maybe on the fire surround and then on this back wall and just have these other two walls where the bay window comes out um, just free or just painted. Um, so yeah, that's my ideas to that. All subject to change, but we'll see how we get on. Okay, so I've just wrote them on there um, as, as what my plans are at the minute. Now this room, I wanted this to be a dining room so that you come obviously up the stairs and then from the kitchen directly into the dining room. But because it is a, such a big space, I wanted to maybe put in and have, a, obviously if this floor is going to be nice as well, have a little bit more of a, a wider floor area and then maybe have a, like a, um, a closet at the back to put sort of coats and shoes and things on and then have the dining room split off here. However, we're going to run into the same issue and this is my plans for all the partitions in the room, in the house have been thwarted by this bay window. I, was gonna, I don't want to say issue because it's a beautiful feature, but it will make a difference in where I'm putting partition walls. And that is something to think about if you're thinking about changing partition walls or adding additional ones as to where they will fall um, you know, with the windows and how they will look on the front. So because of that, I think I'm just going to leave this as a big room. I don't want it just to function as a dining room. So what I'll probably add in there is a nice big bookshelf at the back and make it almost like a library with a really comfy chair in. Um, and I'd like to make a piano to go in there as well, just to, um, yeah, just to, just to add a few little extras as opposed to just, to, you know, tables and chairs really. So that will be the dining room. So there, that's the dining room on there. And uh, I already spoke about the living room. So here's my ideas for the living room. So I really like the way that the dark wood looks against the white in this. And I'd probably like to do something quite modern for the living room. Um, because I have a great idea in mind for a media wall. Again, possibly a fireplace, um, but that houses a TV. Now, I've got a great idea on how I could actually get a working picture on that. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if I can pull it off. It's not ridiculous amounts of money. So you can follow me along in a much later episode and I'll see if I can possibly get that working. Now, as we go upstairs, I spoke about maybe having this room as a bedroom and then this is maybe like a family bathroom and a partition with maybe a study area. Again, same issue with a big bay window on the front, so I can't have that as a partition there. Um, and also, I've noticed from the front as well, this area and this area has two big bay windows, and the rooms at the top just have small windows. Now, because of that, I think it would be wise to change the master bedroom to here, because then you've got the beautiful big bay window, and put the guest bedroom on the top floor, because of the nicer windows, I think that's in a, in a real house, you would have the nicer bedroom with the nicer bay windows. Um, so let's get that changed around. Okay, so I think if we bring that down, that will look a lot better with that window. Um, now here, I still want it to be the same as I said before, um, but I did mention about a partition and a nice bathroom here, and then a, a, like a walk-in wardrobe almost. Um, now I don't, I'm not going to be able to do that again with the partitions but I have another idea where maybe if I just have a little bit of wall there so you would come in the door the walk-in wardrobe is there with sort of fitted units all the way around there and then you'd come through to your modern bathroom I think that works because that's a plan that a lot of houses have um, I have an idea in mind for this bathroom and I'll, I'll show you so for the ensuite, I'd really like um, a very simple, very clean looking, very modern black and white theme. So maybe some kind of patterned flooring, but in black and white and then white crisp um, ceramics and black sanitary wear. Um, so, yeah, this is the theme I'd like to go for for the ensuite. OK, so I've added the ensuite on there and the type of walking wardrobe. So as you come through the door, you've got the little go in there and there's the there's units all the way around. Now, it's not to scale, same as the cloakroom's not to scale either. It's just to give an overall idea of plan at this stage. And then you've got the bathroom and it just means that I don't have to have a massive room for just a bathroom. Um, and I have this, it just adds a little bit of extra interest in there. Now, one of the things I also mentioned was having a bedroom in a bedroom. And having thought about that, I don't want a bedroom above a bedroom. Um, in a real house, you probably would have that because you'd have like the, the family bathroom and the ensuite on one side because all the plumbing's running down that end. But obviously, we're not going to have any plumbing, so I can have a bit of artistic license. Um, and I think I want a bedroom. If I'm putting another bedroom up here, the guest bedroom, I don't want it directly above the bedroom. So I think we'll have the guest bedroom here and the 
sort of family bathroom or the larger bathroom, if you like, over here? So for the family bathroom, I was thinking along the lines of something blue and white, similar to this, probably a bit darker blue and more of a, a crisp white. Um, and then again, having some kind of funky Victorian style flooring on there. Um, I think if it's like a darker, like not quite navy, but quite a, a darker blue, um, copper taps would look quite nice. So because I'm making the other bathroom ultra modern, I'd quite like to make this um, more classical with maybe um, a scroll, a scroll top bath with the clawed feet. Um, and then I think the copper taps will really set off nicely against the dark blue. Okay, so that's added on there. Um, in terms of guest bedroom, don't really have a clue how I'm going to decorate that and the same with the master bedroom at this stage. Um, so yeah, I haven't really thought about that. I've just, I've just decided about plans at the minute, about where the rooms will be. Um, and then the bathroom, again, I don't want to give up a full room to a bathroom, but I might not have a choice. So I'm going to have to think about that, see if I can think of any way to separate it off. Um, the windows up here aren't as big as the bay windows so it might be if the windows only like this area for example I might be able to get away with putting um, a division here and having a smaller room here maybe a study room or something um, so yeah I'll just have to think on that and, and probably decide once it's built to be honest and I can have a play with the divisions with the with the doors on or the doors stood up against it and then the attic I mentioned before, I'm not quite sure. Again, I'll have to just check spacing when it's built as to how I want these rooms to function. Um, you know, it would be good to have one as an attic with some, you know, the old Christmas tree and, and suitcases and other things that you put in attics. Um, and then whether I have the other side to some other functionality, I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. So yeah, that's the um, that's the plan that I have at the moment. Um, please let me know your thoughts. Um, if you have any um, ideas about dividing rooms that you know where you don't have to worry about the um, the window or anything, or any thoughts, um, you know, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and please join me next time where we'll continue with decorating uh, and painting the back of the bottom of the basement. Thanks. Take care.